Hello, good evening. Welcome to this presentation of Iron Government brought to you by the Agency for Public Information. Iron Government takes an in-depth look at government's plans, projects and policies geared towards the growth and overall development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm Hala John. Coming up this evening, we'll hear about new developments in the tourism and aviation sector from the Ministry's press briefing held earlier today. Want to know more about the new Conviasa Air Service to Venezuela? We'll sit down with Venezuelan official Francisco Perez to discuss the details. Then special needs get special attention. We'll hear about a new initiative to develop the delivery of education for differently abled students in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Then young athletes receive special honor for their outstanding performances at the recently concluded Curfta Games. All this coming up, but first let's join the API's Inga Jackson at the News Desk for Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to News Watch for Tuesday, May 17, 2022. I am Inga Jackson. St. Vincent and the Grenadines will host the President of India, Honorable Shri Ram Nate Kavid, and the First Lady over the next three days as the President makes his first official visit to the country. The President will arrive here on Wednesday, May 18. The visit includes the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the two countries, an official sitting of Parliament, visit to the Botanical Gardens, Canawan, and an official ceremony in Calder Junction. This is the first state visit of the President to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the API will provide live coverage of these events over the next couple of days. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College Division of Nursing Education is giving past students who have exhausted their three attempts at the Regional Examination for Nursing Registration yet another chance to become qualified. They now have the opportunity to do so a fourth time after remediation. According to Deputy Dean of Division of Nursing Education, Roxon Stone Maloney, the exam is offered to pass students from 2014 and onwards and is geared towards giving those students who still have that dream of becoming a nurse. An exam that is offered by the General Nursing Council and managed by CXC. The norm is that we offer, we offer the students three chances at writing this examination. However, we do have quite a few persons, past students, who would have written those three chances and were not successful. So in order to give them that additional opportunity to become the registered nurse um, that they would have dreamed to become, we have been asked by the General Nursing Council to organize a remedial program that would be a prerequisite for these past students to be able to write the regional examination for nurse registration a fourth time. This program has two components to it. We have the clinical component as well as a theoretical component. We offer the clinical component so that the students will be back into practice, so that they will be able to um, work in the clinical setting soon as they would have been successful in the regional exam. The remedial program will run from June 7, 2022 to March 31, 2023. Registration ends on May 31, 2022. All interested individuals can send email to dneoffice at svgcc.vc or roxon.stomaloney at svgcc.vc and you can also call 4574503 extension 4503. Both face-to-face -face and online registration are available for students now entering primary school or government-owned early childhood centers. The Ministry of Education is, however, strongly encouraging interested parents and guardians to take advantage of online registration due to the COVID-19 pandemic protocols. The face-to-face -face mode commences on Monday, May 16, 2022. To register online, parents and guardians are kindly asked to visit www.education.gov.vc and simply follow the instructions. Meanwhile, the face-to-face -face exercise will be done in batches according to the students' surnames. 
Surnames begins with the letter A to M will be done from May 16 to 20th, and N to Z will be done from May 23rd to 27th. Registration will take place at the various institutions between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Deadline for all registration is Friday, May 27, 2022. The government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines extend their condolence to the government and people of the United Arab Emirates on the passing of the President of the United Arab Emirates and the ruler of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sri Khalifa bin Zayed al Nayyan. According to a release from the office of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said His Highness was a devoted leader whose progressive economic and social policies were pivotal in empowering, transforming and modernizing the United Arab Emirates. St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the United Arab Emirates have built a quality and meaningful partnership over the recent years. That's all we have for Newswatch. We continue with Hologen with Iron Government. Good evening. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've just landed at the Argyle International Airport. It's 5 p.m. local time. In preparation for arrival, we remind you to keep physical distance and avoid congregating in the aisles when deplaning. On behalf of the flight deck crew and Captain Noel of Flight 549, thank you for choosing American Airlines for your travels today. We hope you've had a pleasant flight and look forward to seeing you again soon. Somebody take me home. to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the most beautiful, diverse Caribbean destination. From white sand beaches and beautiful sailing waters in the Grenadines to our pristine black sand beaches on mainland St. Vincent. Take a journey with me. Let's discover St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Welcome back to Iron Government. The Ministry of Tourism, Civil Aviation, Sustainable Development and Culture held a press briefing earlier today to update the nation on developments within the aviation and tourism sectors. Yinka Chambers was there and filed this report. There have been a number of developments recently within the tourism and civil aviation sectors. To bring the public up to date on these, Tourism Minister Carlos James held a press briefing earlier today. Minister James explained that he participated in several important meetings in Miami during this month. First of these was a meeting with the Royal Caribbean Group. Following the discussions, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Royal Caribbean Group signed a memorandum of understanding to recruit as much as up to 2,000 Vincentians for several job opportunities with the cruise line. Minister James said that the cruise industry is rebooting, and as a result, there is a need for highly skilled and trained professionals. He also noted that aside from the May 13 to 15 recruitment activities, the recruiters will return to the island in the upcoming weeks to continue the recruitment process, including making special provisions for persons in red zone areas. This development, I think, is a significant one for the cruise industry. 
significant development for persons or stakeholders and employees within the tourism sector. Because part of the arrangement is that Royal Caribbean will facilitate training for a number of the persons who are being recruited for this exercise. We do have a significant shortage of trained personnel within the tourism sector. Um, it continues to be a challenge, not just in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but across the East Islands. And having as much as 2,000 persons going off to Royal Caribbean to take up different specialty positions and, and, and entry-level positions, and being able to be afforded the opportunity for training, I think is also a significant part of, of this exercise. One of the important things I note um, in my discussions with Royal Caribbean, I said, we have a number of persons who are going to, especially from the red and orange zones, in North Leeward and North Windward, we're going to apply. And it is going to be very difficult in the recruitment exercise for them to pay one an application fee to a number of the recruitment agencies that they will normally go through in Barbados and other countries, um, even here locally in St. Vincent. The application process to, for a visa and travel to the embassy in Barbados also will pose some challenges. And we're just recovering from the explosive eruption of the last of Fregas, so a year into a recovery. And we do still have significant challenges. And we came to the conclusion that all of these arrangements, we will see minimal cost. If, if there, there is any cost at all, significantly reduced costs to applicants who are applying on the, this process. In fact, in going to the embassy, the application fees and, and, and so on, will, will, the Royal Caribbean will observe those costs. The application process, there will not be an application fee to any agent in applying for um, a position with, with, with the cruise industry, the, the cruise um, agents. And all of these things will be crystallized and, and spearheaded through the Ministry of Tourism in collaboration with the agency and also Royal Caribbean um, during the exercise currently and when they return to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in a few weeks. An important part of the discussion I said to them as well, look, listen, we have persons who will be traveling from as far north as Fancy and Fitzhughes. And it is going to be very challenging to arrange transportation, um, even a simple thing as, as getting lunch in Kingston, because you have to wait long hours, extended hours. I've seen some of the lines in the um, south Eastern area, beach comas, where there's the application process taking place. And we came to the conclusion that we will also extend this recruitment drive to the red and orange zones, decentralizing the application process. So it means that we'll identify a site on the northwestern end of the island and also a site on the north eastern end of the island in which we will take the recruitment exercise to the communities as opposed to persons coming into Kingston um, with the long and extended lines that we have been seeing um, taking place to date. So I think that is a, a big plus in terms of facilitating persons who are directly adversely affected by the explosive eruption of the last of those in the red and orange zones. And we intend to do this in a few weeks. Um, hopefully by the end of June, maybe early July, we will see the recruitment exercise with the Royal Caribbean here again in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To date, approximately 400 persons have already gained full-time employment. 
um, with Royal Caribbean Cruises through the recruitment fair hosted at Beachcombers. And that is within that short period, 400 persons have already been um, employed and employed on the spot. So while we would have had that exercise um, last week, by the end of June into early July, they will return to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we will continue to have a centralized location for recruitment in Kingston, somewhere in the, in the vicinity of Kingston, um, the villa area. But we intend to extend, as I said, those two locations to the northeastern and northwestern side of the island, going directly into the red and orange zones to facilitate the recruitment process for persons to go off. So we have already filled part of the quota, which is 400 persons. We have another 1,600 people to go in terms of the recruitment. And hopefully we can meet that quota. Of course, though the target is to reach 2,000 persons in terms of the recruitment drive. You may naturally see that being either a limited number below 2,000 based on the requirements and the threshold that the applicants will have to meet, or you may very well see that number going beyond 2,000 based on the requirements and the available vacancies that are on offer with the Royal Caribbean Cruise. James also said that his ministry is open to assisting persons with the online portion of the process should they require the additional support. We at the Ministry of Tourism will be facilitating uh, pre-interview sessions, I'm working along with, with personnel within the different um, agencies, Royal Caribbean, but also importantly applicants, those who may want to um, show up at an, uh, one of the, the job fairs or the employment centers when we have them established. There are a number of requirements which you will need. A valid passport, of course, um, a police record. As I said, they will be facilitating medicals on, on site and e even further medicals for persons who they may want to recruit, but there may be issues uh, or that, that may pop up from time to time uh, medically. But you must have a valid passport and a clean police record and, of course, a valid identification card so that we can assist with documenting and facilitating the application process. There is a portal in which persons who are applying will have to um, lodge their applications uh, for a pre-assessment screening. Um, the site will be RCLC track, which is T R A C R C L C T R A C dot com, which will take you to the portal. Of course, at the ministry, we'll, we will provide that information, um, send it out to the media in terms of an, a link, a direct link that persons can access um, to the application portal. But of course, it's important that we alert persons that you're just not showing up at the application center with, at the recruitment center without a valid ID, um, passport, and a police record. Those are three forms, of forms that are important in terms of the application process. The minister, whose portfolio includes civil aviation while in Miami, also attended the fourth ministerial meeting of the ECICAO contracting states. A declaration of intent was signed by all member states, and plans are aggressively in motion to return the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, ECA, to Category 1 status. Of course, one of the challenges we had when we were downgraded to a Category 2 was that some countries, though they may have been up to par with the requisite regulations and standards for safety and oversight, there are some that were well below that standard. And we took the decision that we will work along with the Eastern, well, the International Civil Aviation Authority organization and the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority to facilitate having the Director General of ECHO having a lot more oversight as to the regulatory aspect of civil aviation within the EC states 
and to allow an ECHA to function with a stronger mandate so as to properly regulate the aspects at, at our airport and our airspace in relation to safety and oversight as it relates to the constant monitoring and approvals of licensing and the operations as it relates to the regulatory aspect of the protocols that deals with regulations that allow us to be in conformity with the International Civil Aviation Organization. So we took that decision there, that meeting, to facilitate that. And we're hoping by the end of this year to move to look at a number of different measures in which we can at some point move back to Category 1 status. The dialogue with Lawrence Wildgoose, Federal Aviation Administration Assistant, Administrator for Policy, International Affairs and the Environment, and other senior representatives of the International Civil Aviation Organization was held at International Air Transport Association's regional office in Miami, Florida. For the API's Iron Government, I am Yinka Chambers. Stay with us, more Iron Government, up next. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, lush mountains and valleys, rivers, hidden waterfalls, and multiple islands and islets, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are a friendly people, welcoming tourists from all over the world with exotic boutique and luxury hotels and a hospitable business environment. Let's make all tourists welcome at our international airport, on cruises, on yachts, on sailboats, on land and sea tours, at beach lines, at our restaurants, shops and bars, and at our national festivals. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace Tourism it. Is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. Have you registered for your COVID-19 digital vaccination certificate yet? Vincentians who received their COVID-19 vaccine in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are encouraged to apply for their vaccine certificate. If you are planning on traveling or planning to attend upcoming fully vaccinated events, here are two steps you can follow. Step one, send an email to vaccine certificate at gov.bc with the following documents. One, your COVID-19 vaccination card. Two, photo identification card. Three, passport size photo. This is optional. Step two, be patient and allow for a maximum of 72 hours for the information to be forwarded to your email. Don't forget to check your spam or junk mail. For more information, call 784-451-2183 or the COVID-19 hotline 784-534-4325. Your health, a shared responsibility. Welcome back. When Confiasa Airlines re-established once weekly flights to Venezuela out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on April 22, 2022, there was no doubt that this new air service marks the beginning of tremendous potential for tourism and new business opportunities between both countries. Last week, the API sat down with Francisco Perez, head of mission of the Embassy of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, to discuss details of this new exciting prospect. This fly to Venezuela and to San Vincent represent a big opportunity for the production in San Vincent and the producer, right. producer in, in, in Venezuela, Venezuela to uh, export and import. No? Yes. Uh, and we can increase the commerce between the two countries. Uh, I received already some uh, requests uh, to, for uh, import from Venezuela some goods uh, we are working on that uh, to put together the, the businessman from San Vincent right, with the businessman right, to, right, from, right, from Venezuela so right. they can, uh, uh, you know, uh, match 
to see what what they can do together. Definitely. And also the government, the the government of San Vincent is interested in in sports and production, ag ag agriculture sport, uh, uh, agro uh, product to Venezuela. And of course, uh, I I am sure that that could happen uh, even. Because we, for example, uh, there are products that you have here that we have now in, in Venezuela okay. from the agriculture. Uh, and of course, some products from Venezuela that you need here in, in San Yes, Vincent. yes, definitely. Uh, so I think the situation is getting better, it's improving. Uh, it's good time to go. People can ask me, well, the security, you know, uh, that is something that is concerned to every tourist yes. that want to visit any, yes. any country. Any country. The That's security. I am uh, safe in the country that I will visit. And of course, like another country, if you go to some areas, that area are not safe. Right. Maybe right. Uh, you have to know which area. Right. Normally, the around the tourist sector, uh, uh, you have a, a, a police and security right. and everything. Right. So if you want to go to another place, like here in San Vincent, you go to another places that are not for tourists, you yeah. will have, you are exposed. Uh, yeah that you can be robber or uh, the delinquency is, is big right, and right. you go to England or you go to France or Spain mm -hmm. or the United States, mm -hmm. is the same, is the mm -hmm. same. You can, mm -hmm. you should go where the places for tourists right. and there you will be safe. Here at the embassy, um, you said a number of people have reached out to you in terms yeah. of um, maybe business. Uh, creating linkages there. Yes. Um, right now, some people might be looking at this and say, you know what, I think I need to have a chat with um, Francisco to see how I could, you know, maybe invest in uh, some of the things that you mentioned here. Is that something you're going to encourage now going forward or are you going to set up perhaps a separate external office to deal with people who are willing to invest because that may be something that's big no 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 we, we we deal with this in at the embassy so you will deal yes with it uh, if uh, there are some some body that want to talk to me uh, in term of uh, uh, give some advice uh, related right, with the right, invest right. that he want to do i am i am open to do it uh, i i research i don't know uh, about all the areas that uh, they 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 want to invest, but we research. We have in Venezuela in our foreign affairs minister one vice minister dedicated all the time to uh, link the, uh, do the, that right, link. So right. what we do is ask that vice minister uh, send information and they return us to with the with the with the different company that they can they can right. uh, talk to right. if there are a private company if there are public company they also give the the the, the advice but it's something that we do here at the uh, at the embassy right, you know? right. Uh, the only thing as i say people when they call me just send me uh, an email with the letter asking for the information and we'll we will research and that sometimes take one month sometimes take a, a little bit more than one month but uh, we work on that this is a small right, embassy right. but we work another major component of the new air service is the cargo service and yeah. of course people are going to be interested in maybe getting into venezuela and seeing some of the products that you manufacture and and seeing how that they can establish you know um that sort of linkage so yes. that also is is encouraged you yes. mentioned the coffee there might be some people who are interested in yes, importing yes. some coffee yes yes definitely yes. do you have rates for shipments right now in terms of cargo okay yes we have not just conviasa in a normal fly i mean uh, each fly that come here have a space for cargo also no in right. that in that in the in the same embraer 190 uh, uh, and but also conviasa have cargo service right i mean if one company here or two companies here uh, do business with Venezuela with another two company and they uh, establish that weekly or one every 15 day will receive 
the, the stuff that they bought, for example, coffee. Right. They go to cargo uh, company in uh, Conviasa, uh, or cargo service, and they establish the frequency of uh, the cargo. The company in Venezuela put or bring the stuff to Conviasa at the airport, right. and uh, the uh, Conviasa do in a different flight because oh, maybe it's big than, too big uh, than the, the, uh -huh. the, the, the Embraer. And they have another another fly that is special for cargo, and they can do whatever, whatever. Okay. Even okay. if it's something from Venezuela, from San Vincent to Venezuela. For example, fish. If Venezuela, if San Vincent want to export fish, some fish to Venezuela, and they they link with another uh, company there, we can do it by uh, that cargo. Or uh, if. Uh, Somebody here need fish from Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I don't know tuna. Right. That is, uh, we we have a so much tuna in Venezuela. Well, they can they can use cargo service right. uh, of Conviasa to, right. to do it right. uh, without any problem. It, well, just without you even link. saying that means there's also the opportunity for cold storage on board these flights. That is a big thing. Yes, uh, I'm not sure if. They can not freezer service, but cold. Storage. No, yes, but right. but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long could right. have the storage there. Yeah. Or the capacity. I'm not sure about the capacity. Right. I know the the cargo have the the service of transport, mm -hmm. but I have to reserve about the, right. the storage, right. Uh, right. cold storage, and the 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 time that can can be because if you buy something like a fish like a tuna yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to bring here. Uh, less time you have in the in the in the in the storage is more fresh the yeah. the, the product so yeah. it's something that has to be very very fast the, yeah. the transport yeah. and, and the, the everything no? uh, um, at the airport in in, in Maiketia, in La Guaira they have a storage room a storage right. enough storage for right. everything and also uh, the the freezes uh, uh, storage mm -hmm. uh, what I have to Research is if Conviasa yeah. have the right. the, the, the service so. or the service of uh, right. storage, right. but I'm sure that in Maiketia they have private. Uh, so that is something that can be arranged. You know, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, nothing impossible. Uh, is what I, I want to say. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Yes, of course. And it's a big opportunity. Conviasa, the fly and the this relationship. Also, remember that Venezuela and San Vincent signed it. Uh, uh, air, air service uh, agreement, agreement. So uh, the same that is doing from Venezuela to here can be made in uh, uh, any airline that have uh, the government of San Vincent uh, approved to, to Venezuela. So wow. uh, it's big the the air the the air uh, service agreement. Uh, so that is something also that we can be. Uh, in uh, the benefit of both countries, no? and this uh, fly, uh, um, Conviasa as a company, is a benefit for the Caribbean. Definitely, I am, I am Definitely. absolutely uh, sure that this uh, uh, beginning with the company, because this is just the beginning. You have just three, four uh, uh, days that a uh, week that. Star fly, right? And that is just the beginning of many uh, good things that uh, my country and that this relationship uh, uh, the, will bring to uh, both countries. Both countries. We are going to benefit both from from, from this. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. definitely. And in this post-pandemic age, where everybody is looking to recover from the two-year, um, I guess lull that we've all had <laughs> yes. you know everybody's anxious to get things going and as you see venezuela has some serious projections for growth um within the next coming years or months or so on so yes, definitely we have uh, 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 i didn't mention something else uh, the investment in venezuela the person that want to invest in venezuela is you know just in uh, this business of this commerce we have also the uh, investment in tourist area. Yes. Uh, the institution 
that offer uh, tourist investment is Benetur, it's our institution, the government institution, and they they uh, they put in the in the in the market uh, some uh, hotel, other hotel to build, other project. Uh, so if there are somebody here in San Vincent that wants to do a tourist project in Venezuela, uh, they can do it now. Uh, they can come to the embassy. We can, uh, you know, show all the the opportunity that they have, and they can do, do business in, in 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 our country. Just to mention one uh, that I I know, Margarita, uh, one hotel that didn't didn't finish to build, and uh, is now offering. Uh, to any international or national okay, in, in, okay, investment, okay, okay. and they just have to pa pa pay a part of uh, what the bank is asking, and then finish to build the the, the project. And the project is a beautiful and huge project. Really? Uh, okay. So we contact you for details embassy, yes. about that. Here oh, in the, at the embassy, you can call me. Uh, my my phone number is five three four eight four five four. Uh, you can call me anytime. Uh, I'm working 24 hours, seven days. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, Mr. Perez, um, this has been so informative and interesting. Um, I definitely am even more eager to, to even get down to Venezuela to see some of what you have to offer. And I mean, it sounds lovely and spectacular. I hope that you can go sometime to Venezuela I and do. take your camera, your, your cameraman, and I definitely there and, will. To and chronicle bring that to experience. to San Vincent all the experience and show them the the Vinci person uh, how beautiful is my country. Wonderful. I hope so. You're Wonderful. invited. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, being here at this uh, beautiful country that uh, you are now in. in Beside the landscape that you are watching now <laughs> is Vinci, Vinci <laughs> landscape. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> read, learn, grow. The children are the future. Help them read, learn, grow. Only reading is the key, so help them read, learn, grow. Let's show them how much fun it is to read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. First and foremost, reading from so young is advantageous. Link with the teachers. Working hand in hand is a must. Just 10 minutes of your child reading to you is a plus. Get fun books, make reading priority. When children read, they are able to learn. And the more they learn, the more they grow. So parents help your kids read, learn, grow. Reading is fun, kids have to know. Read, learn, grow. The children are the future. Help them read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. This message is brought to you by the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, funded by United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to www.oecs.org slash ELP. Thanks for staying with us for more Iron Government. As government continues to invest heavily in the education sector, all aspects of the system are receiving attention, including special education. A new project specifically geared towards strengthening the delivery of special needs education involving teachers and parents is currently underway. We'll hear more in this report. A project aimed at strengthening the systems for basic and special needs education delivered in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is well underway. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Human Development Service Delivery Project includes building capacity in the special needs education sector. Recently, a team of experts from academic institutions in Canada met with parents and teachers of the Sunshine School on Beckway to explore different strategies and techniques in helping children with special needs. Social and Economic Development and Inclusion Practitioner Maureen Weber says these workshops are critical going forward. Holding sessions with parents and with teachers, building their capacity to work with the teachers a lot more. But more equally important is working with the parents. Because some of us as parents with children with disabilities have our challenges. Sometimes we get tired, and now we don't know what to do, how to manage behavior, how to appreciate negative and positive reinforcement. And today's session actually in Beckway here was really, really incredible. Some 18 parents were here, 
and they were asking lots of questions. In fact, I had to move the lunch time. Because it was 12 30, it was lunch, and nobody was moving to go and get the lunch. So it was an extra hour, and I think they got a lot from the process. It was a great experience for um, teachers and parents to be able to communicate together and talk about how to build community um, to support students. And uh, uh, my colleagues and I were discussing some strategies that can be used at home, uh, some behavioral strategies uh, and things that can be consistent between the school and the home um, because ultimately that consistency allows students to thrive. I think it was a really great opportunity for parents not only to learn from us but also to learn from each other. Um, the conversations that were happening at the table were amazing to see all these great ideas that the parents had for each other as well as the ideas that we were able to give to them. They were able to see how that might help support them in working really well with their children. I thought it was quite an interesting um, discussion for parents, for teachers and all who are here today. Uh, we could have learned from each other's experience, those of us who have children with um, ADS or ADHD, you know, attention deficit disorder, and students, uh, children with autism. And you could, we could learn, parents could learn from each other that we have to deal with these situations where our children are concerned. We learn why their behavior, the functioning and what is causing the way they are behaving and how to deal with them. So today, I, I believe today was very fruitful, beneficial for all parents and teachers that were visiting that was a part of the discussion. It's really an opportunity to learn a lot and you know we take step you know as I go home to deal with her she's not an easy um, child to deal with you know for the past years I've been going through a lot you know she um, had a stroke when she was five year old you know she's struggling with seizure um, autism and she also asthmatic so, you know, it's been rough with me, you know, for the past years. And by coming at this little seminar, I learn a lot. And to be honest, I will take step and also communicate with the teachers and, you know, love to know what went on when she go back to school. We have gone through that session to the learning about our children, knowing their needs, knowing their wants, their behavioral pattern and the causes of it, and the way um, we should communicate to them and when they are communicating to us in their own behavioral pattern. So I have learned a lot from this um, session whereby um, I can share my input. Each of us parents learn from each other. Um, we we learn things that we were well, not even cognizant would have been happening. We might have been ignorant, you know, to a lot of our children's behavior. We might have got angry, not knowing the cause, because from a psychological standpoint, we did not understand. But no, this session... Concerning the session today, it was very nice, where we get to know more about how to deal with our children. Um, my child is not really autism but she goes to the school because she is slow but she is she pick up but then it have words that she does skip and like if she see can up there then she gone low and then she'll be like mommy what's this word again but the meeting today it was so nice and it was an experience for me for deal with these kind of stuff and things so i really will urge others that the next time that this meeting is in session, we need more parents to come out because honestly, we did not have enough parents today to deal with this kind of things and know how to deal with your children at home. Because some of them say it's a, it is upsetting and so, so I think that more parents did need to come out to this session. But it was a very good experience and it was a nice start. The experts will meet with teachers and parents of the three special needs schools in the country. Teachers from these schools are also undergoing training. Young athletes get a special treat when we return. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, through the Ministry of Public Service, Consumer Affairs and Sports, is pleased to announce its Employees Assistance Program. The EAP aims to enable a positive work environment and safeguard the holistic health and well-being of all employees while increasing productivity and improving national output. The EAP unit would like all public servants to know how valued they are to the country. The unit is located within the St. Vincent Cooperative Building, Rose Place, Kingstown. Contact us at 
the telephone number 485-6912 or email eap.mps at gov.vc. We care about you. In this ongoing pandemic, we as a country are running the race of our lives. Do we beat COVID or does COVID beat us? And the talk of several ways of the virus to come, how do we ensure that we come out on top? That outcome will be determined by what we do. Do we take the vaccine and protect ourselves or do we gamble with the chance that COVID will not catch us? We are in the race of our lives and the goal is to win. As an athlete, I want to get to the finish line first. The question is, do we beat COVID-19 or do we allow it to beat us? Welcome back. In our final segment this evening, young athletes across the nation were encouraged to continue to strive for excellence by officials attending a cocktail reception held at the Prime Minister's residence recently. This was in celebration of the accomplishments of those who took part in this year's Carifta Games. The API's Barbara Oliver has more in this report. The future of sports certainly looks bright here in SVG, given the recent performances of this country's young athletes at the recently held Carifta Games in Jamaica. Their accomplishments were celebrated during a cocktail reception held at the Prime Minister's residence on Saturday. The young athletes who brought home silver and bronze medals received a cash appreciation of $1,000, with the rest of the athletes who participated in the Games receiving $500. Given remarks, Minister of Sports to the Honorable Frederick Stevenson heaped praise upon the young athletes and challenged them to continue to excel both in sports and academic pursuits. We are very proud of your achievements over the recent couple of weeks and we want to say that we, that is why we are here this evening, to show you that the government and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are proud of you and that is why we are hosting you here this evening at the official residence of the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm sure for most of you this may be your first time here. The Prime Minister would welcome you a little later but I'm very happy to be here with you this evening. I want to say to you that I'm, I'm happy for your success. I'm happy for what you have done and will continue to do for St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the field of sports. I know that sometimes we hear that sports is difficult, it's a challenge. Sports and education can't agree. But I looked at the, the character games in Jamaica and I noted that one of the top athletes from Jamaica a youngster has gotten 19 or 18 subjects at CXC. So that tells me, and that should say to you, that sports and education can go a very long way. Also giving remarks, Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King, said opportunities have opened up for student athletes to develop their athletic skills in Jamaica. The Education Minister said this program has already begun to bear fruit. Thus far, and I'm not saying the program is already deeply new, but thus far, what we are seeing is that that program is impacting positively. So much so that some of our young athletes have already gained scholarships to universities. And yeah, we ought to applaud them for that because what is happening we are getting that commitment from our young athletes and so they are moving on to university education and and we can speak of people like Handel Roban who will be attending the Penn State University I believe come September there are sort of some other names but I'm saying that this seemed to be a very good program and we have to encourage our students to do both. That is to say, continue to develop academically, continue to pursue athletics, um, skills, talent, 
and let us combine both as you seek to develop yourself. Living in the future address, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez said this country has overcome tremendous challenges in recent times, including the volcanic eruption of April 9th and the COVID-19 pandemic. He said the accomplishments of the young athletes is a fresh hope for the nation. The championships, the inter-school championships, that's part of respiring. The Karifta Games is part of respiring. The OECS netball team championship won by us in Dominica. Part of respiring. The Vinci Premier League is part of respiring. Akeem Smart, a professional basketballer from South Wales, who just returned from Oman on a professional contract. That's part of respiring. You hear me? And Carnival will be part of respiring. And when we go to church on Saturdays and Sundays and we lift our spirits, that is part of respiring. And when our children and their parents and their teachers on Thursday and Friday in an organized, disciplined and civilized manner had the CPA, that is a part of respiring. And as we prepare for all of those 2,000 plus children to go to secondary school, Come September, that is part of respiring, fresh hope. And for you, the sky is the limit, young people. It is a heavenly condition to be young. And the time you have, use it well. The Prime Minister also shared some advice with the coaches. The coaches must not have a suicide pact in relation to their athletes because the only person who will suffer is the athlete. Forget about the ego. I know you want to beat the chest and say you have a champion athlete. But you can have the athlete. Nobody can encroach on you, but you can discuss it with other persons and don't. And the way the thing is going, suppose the person is going to Central Leeward and Morgan is there. B Barely, sorry. <laughs> well, I think it's officially called Central Leeward. Let it. <laughs> Boy, you're a real blackfish man, eh? <laughs> but that coach, that's the the the, the family might go to some other coach to want to work with them privately. But clearly, that coach has to work with Morgan. They're my brother. Otherwise, there's going to be confusion. Ill discipline is going to develop with the athlete and it's not going to be good. So you need to have your own protocols worked out as athletes. Reporting for the API, I am Bob and Oliver. That's all we have for this presentation of Iron Government brought to you by the Agency for Public Information. If you missed any of our programs and want to catch up, please visit us on our social media platforms. Do join us again on Thursday for another presentation of Iron Government. Have a wonderful evening. I'm Hala John.